Good afternoon all. So I'm going to wire this socket, uh, 16 amp socket, such that it can connect into this 16 amp plug. Now that's going to be on the wall but mounted sideways. So this socket will be like that. It will go in like so. Yes, that's right. That little peg goes into that uh, slot. Um, that means that my earth will be over that side. Now looking at this cable, if I put earth over that side, live and neutral um, do line up with these. Now of course that's not going to work at the other end, but I'll worry about that later. And also, so what have I got? I've got earth there, live up there, and that is the live one. There's an L marked on there, I don't know whether you can see it. And the curl of the cable also heads off in the right direction. So I think that's perfect for there. So I'm going to start stripping this back here. So I'm starting by just using a knife blade to go around the outside insulation. And then I'll just carve that until I get to the depth where I can see the inner conductors, but trying not to cut into the uh, sheaths of the inner conductors, the uh, brown, blue and green and yellow. So let's carry on carving that. This is the slow way of doing it. Right, by sort of working that backwards and forwards, that's now split. The uh, lubricating powder is starting to fall out. And there are my three conductors. So now I need to work out how long these are going to be to reach these, it looks like the earth one will need to be cut a bit shorter, um, but with the cable still being able to be clamped into the clamping lid mechanism. So I think I'm going to cut down live and neutral or line and neutral to, I don't know about there. Um, earth I think can be cut shorter because it uh, sticks up a bit higher. So let's cut that about there. Yeah, that looks about right. Now I'm going to use these strippers, which have the two V-shaped blades, um, to strip these back. So how much do I need stripped back? Really quite a lot. Uh, maybe I've cut these a bit short, actually, because I really want that to go mostly down into that ferrule. Uh, so I think I'll set that for the maximum, which is 12 millimeters. Let's try this one. Strip that all the way like so that looks pretty good these insulation pieces just get stuck in here it's a real nuisance let's do the live line and let's start with those two and see how I get on so here's my question these ferrules which I want to use I mean I probably don't actually need to but I quite like the idea of using them should I pre-crimp that? I know the camera hasn't focused on that very well. I seem to have got the length of that about right. Um, shall I pre-crimp that onto there so they don't fall off? Or shall I just have it loose on there while I attempt to screw it into there? I'm not entirely sure. If I pre-crimp it, I haven't got a proper crimping tool. I mean, I did think I could just touch a bit of solder on the end of there um, so that it didn't flow all the way up because the bolt's quite high up. And I know it's very much frowned upon to use soldered or tinned copper in a screw terminal, but I can't think of a sensible way to crimp that. I mean, all I've got are these pliers. I suppose I could try crushing it like so. Maybe I'll give that a go and see what the result is. And the result is probably quite predictable. It's crushed into a sort of horrible triangular formation, but that might be good enough just to keep the ferrule on the wire. Um, the bolt, the bolts in here are quite near the top, so they will crush the top of this copper tube. The bottom part really isn't used, so it's just being used to hold the ferrule onto the wire. So I think that might be okay. Uh, these really are all a bit short, but if I can make it work, I think I'll stick with it. Now, I'm not concerned about putting the cap on the wire as yet, because the other end of the wire 
is free, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'll just crush this earth one. I've decided to go for the orange because it's a tighter fit of the wire within the ferrule. Um, the green one would be rather large, even though that fits better in the earth pin. But yeah, let's go with the three oranges. And now will this fit into these three receptacles with the extreme short lengths of wire that I've allocated to them? Oh, actually, yeah, that does fit quite well. So now I need to tighten these bolts and crush it all up good and tight. Not sure how well this is going to come over on the camera, but let's get the live and neutral crushed in. And yes, it just feels better that I know that the strands in there are not fraying out or being twisted or being torn. I think I do like the feral idea. I'm sorry if you can't see this very well. Let's tighten that bottom one up just to get some grip and then start tightening the top one. Now I can move my hand away so you can see how that's going. Right, much more pressure on live and neutral. The tighter you get these, the less resistance you're going to get and resistance is where you're going to get heat. That's your enemy. Let's tighten earth. Okay, I think that's good and tight. That's pretty good. And with the uh, grippy top on there, I think that's going to be fine. I did cut these a little bit short, but actually that's worked out quite well. Good. So I'll slide on the cap from this end. That fits nicely in there. That's going to tighten up pretty well. And the shark's fin, where does that go? Uh, yes, that goes there. That's right, because it goes on the side with the um, cover. So let's click that into place. That's done. And now it's a case of tightening this up. And as we know, the grippy thing in there isn't going to turn. Now have I got my curl the right way because it's going to curl that way. Yes, it feels absolutely perfect. So let's tighten this up. Not, a, not applying any pressure to that. Just let that roam free. And as we know, the inner part of that isn't going to turn. That's probably tight enough. Yeah, that's good. That's done. So I fitted the wall mounting plug and socket back to the wall, placed this in position, and I've determined that that is the point that I'm going to cut the wire. So it's a really short cable because the plug and the socket, they're sort of at right angles to each other and the cable comes around in a loop. Um, but that's where it's going to be cut. So now what's the best way to cut this? A scissor cuts what I want, but this is whopping great cable. Am I going to get through it with this? Oh yeah, pretty much. That's it. So that's my cable. That's the length. Let's get the, um, oh, which one's this? That's the socket. Yeah, let's get the plug on there. And uh, this time it is crucially important that I put the cap on here first. So I don't, <laughs> I don't end up wiring it all and then thinking, oh, I didn't put the cap on. Now, where's my plug? Now, once again, earth is raised up uh, relative to live and neutral. So I can cut earth a bit shorter. But what I can't do is cut uh, live and neutral any shorter because I've kind of measured those exactly to fit into about there. So I'll need to cut the insulation back, not go too crazy, not go so far that this won't work. Just carving into this until I see the coloured inner sheaths appear. Yeah, I think that's the brown has just appeared. Let's now carve into there until I see the blue appear. Now I was thinking that live and neutral, well I was thinking that the earth would have to be pushed between live and neutral, but actually that all works because that's live. There's a little L in there. I don't know whether you can see it. So that all is all in the right direction and it was all correct there as well. So if you think about it, 
yeah, you end up, I do remember actually doing this on a piece of cable the other day, and on both ends I had to push earth between live and neutral. So clearly that piece of cable was the wrong way around. But I think that's going to fit in there quite well. Okay, let's get my ferrules. Right, my three ferrules are on and I've crimped over the ends just using pliers, so they're a bit random. Uh, in fact, this one's gone into more of a U shape and these two are more triangular. But the important thing is they're held on the ends of the wires and we've got some nice area for these screws to grip on when I slide this in here. Okay, I've got all the gubbins on there, all correct and proper. Let's get that in there. And that's on there. And once again, it's very tight to the insulation, but I think that's fine. I do think these ferrules make sense because there's no concern that stray strands are sort of folded back or being twisted or damaged in any way. Yes, that's good. So those are done up really nice and tight. Time to bring this piece up. That turns and locks in like that. That won't come undone. And now this um, cable grip, and as I say, this is pretty much a one shot. So I need to put this on. Perhaps I'll bring that up onto the bench. I'll do this off camera because I want to tighten that up, but not untighten it again, because that will put a twist on there. I mean, it's quite well, because the insulation runs so close to the contacts, it should take a bit of turning abuse, but yeah, let's just give that a one shot application. Okay, there's my cable. It's really short. Uh, so this bit goes down the bottom sideways, that bit goes upwards. Um, I'm not quite sure how the rotational positions of the earth pins are yet, but I'll just have a look at that now. And here is my cable. So there's the uh, socket which will be supplied with mains from the consumer unit comes down my really nice, neat, short cable uh, into the plug and that goes off to the shed. So I'm liking that. Cheerio.